Hey guys and welcome to a new video on this neural networks tutorial. In this video here we're going to talk about how to load a custom data set um, into Keras and TensorFlow and how we can use that to actually like train on neural networks. So a lot of you guys have actually like commented on my videos in the neural networks tutorial. How can we actually like load in our own data set and then train that data set um, on our neural networks so we can then do predictions on our own projects and applications that we want to do. So I'm going to make this video here. So I'm going to show you how we can actually like load in uh, our own custom data set because this is the, the case when we actually like want to use neural networks and our data sets for, uh, for something in the real world or for our own applications and, and projects and not just like the built-in data set that is already provided by TensorFlow and Keras. But first of all, I'm going to join the Discord server. I'll link to the description here. You can come join the channel, chat us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can always become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee or if you have some problems in your own projects and you want some advice and some help you can go in there become a member and i'll help you out so first of all here we're just going to look at a data set that we're going to load in um, as a custom data set so this is a data set that is not provided by carriers or or tensorflow so we can't just use those functions to actually load them in but we have our own data set we have collected our own images and then how can we actually load those into carriers and tensorflow so this video here, we're just going to have a, like a standard or like a really simple data set. You can use this for like your own data set. You could have multiple classes. You could have 10, 100, 100 classes if you want that. But in this video here, we're just going to take a simple data set uh, with, a, with, a, with a, like a number of, of images. So in this example, we're just going to have cats and dogs. So we have two classes and then we both divide them into cats and dogs. And then I'm going to show you how we can actually like load in uh, to carers. So this is just a file structure that we need. So we just need some cats and some dog images. And if we go into this one here, we just get all the cat and dog images. Um, and in this case here, we get the cat images. So we get all the cat images in our data set here. And then in the other folder, we have all the dog images. And then in code, I'm going to show you how we can actually like divide these things both into our training set and also a validation and test set. So we can actually like validate and test our model after we train it on our training data set. So now we're just going to take a short look at the documentation here from TensorFlow, which we can also use in, uh, in Keras. So we're going to use this image data generator and then we're just going to flow uh, the images from our directory as I'm going to show you. So we need to set up like an M image uh, data generator and then we can call some functions that will actually like load in the images from the path or the directories uh, that we're going to specify here. So here we can see that this generates batches of tens of images with real time data augmentation. So if you want to do data augmentation on your images as well, uh, you can do it in this data image generator as well and you can just specify these things. We have some default parameters as you can see here. So if you don't know like what these parameters does and you don't need them, you can just like just have this image data generator and then just call from that. But here we can specify some different kind of values for data augmentation. If we, for example, want to have some rotation range in our image, we want to rotate our images um, a bit. Let's say you don't have like that huge uh, or like that big of a data set and you can't really train your model, it is probably underfitting or something like that, then you will need more data and more variances in your data. And then data augmentation is really good. So you'll get a more robust and also more general model when you're actually using data augmentation um, on your data set, unless you have an, a huge data set where you have like all scenarios in that um, and all the variations too. You can also do some zooming, you can do some uh, horizontal and vertical flips and you can also rescale them and so on. But we also have this validation split here so we can actually like um, specify how much of our data in our directory that we're going to pass do we want to use as validation data. So we can set this value here from zero to one and often we're just using like 0.2 because we're, we want to use like 20% of our whole data set for, va for validating our model like doing training. So first of all we're going to train our model on the actual data and then we're going to validate it on our uh, on our validation set while we're actually like training it over over the epochs. We can also set some pre-processing functions uh, and stuff like that, but we're going to go into that in uh, in another video. In this video here, I just want to show you in code how we can load it in with uh, like our own custom data set in with this image data generator. Then in the next couple of videos, we're going to actually like load our own custom data set in and then use transfer learning on our custom data set, where in the other videos, we have just used um, transfer learning on data sets that are already implemented or like already provided by TensorFlow and Keras. So we're now jumping into Google Colab here where we're just going to import these different kind of modules. So we, we need to know, we need to actually import TensorFlow and Keras and then inside of tensorflow.keras.preprocessing.image we can actually like import this image data, data generator that we just saw in, uh, in the documentation. 
So the only thing that we actually like need when we want to load in our own custom data set compared to like one that is provided by, by Keras where we need to specify it up here and then we'll just like load it in. We'll just call uh, that data set that we want to call load and then just uh, load it in. But now we actually like need to have our data set stored in, uh, in Google Drive. So when we're using Google Colab, it is all happening in the cloud. So we need our data set to be in the cloud as well. So if you have your data set uh, on your local machine, you need to um, upload it to the cloud or like to Google Drive first of all, before you can act, before you can actually like train your neural network on your own custom data set. So it doesn't know anything about your own computer when we're actually using uh, Google Colab here. We also have some uh, options over here to the left where you can actually like find these files, but we're just going to store it in uh, in Google uh, in Google Drive, so we can actually like just use that and not um, and not like a local machine here in Google Colab. Um, so first of all, here we need to have this from Google.colab, and then we're going to import Drive. So this will just be Google Drive. Then we need to mount our actual like Drive um, to this Drive here that we have. So we just have this content G Drive, which is just like the, the standard like uh, folder or like the, the standard. Um, directory that all of our files in our uh, in our like uh, Google Drive folders are and then we have this force remount here so when we have to actually, like remount our directory or like our file system uh, it will do it like it will just force remount it when we set it equal to true so now we just need to specify our data set path here so we just specify the whole path here to the actual like directory where we have our images stored so here is just my standard G, uh, G drive so my Google Drive then we have my drive and then I just have a directory called Colab Notebooks. And then we just have our data set here, which is cat stock data set. And I reduced the number of images that we have in that data set. And then we have the pet images. And then inside of pet images, fold the folder, uh, we have cats and dog images where we have all the images stored in those two, uh, two folders. So when we run the program here, first of all, we need to import the modules. And then we're just going to mount our Google Drive here uh, when we run this blog of code. So now we'll get up this link here. So you need to go to this URL in the browser and then you need to sign into your Google Drive account. And then when you have signed into your Google, uh, Google Drive account, you will actually like get a code. You can just copy paste that code and then you'll just enter your authorization code um, in here. You can just control C, control V in this one here. And then when you hit enter, it will then mount it, mount it to your drive and then you can actually like access your data set um, in Google, from Google Drive here in Google Colab and train your neural network on that. So now I've just copied my authorization code here and I'm just going to paste it in and then we hit enter. Then we'll just hit enter here and then it will actually like mount it to the G drive. It will take uh, some time here and then it will actually like show that now it is mounted to the Google drive and you're now able to actually like use, uh, use the file from your uh, Google drive. So now we can see that it is mounted at content slash G drive and then we just access that by our dataset path up here as we can see. So we specified that as well my drive and then the path to our actual like notebook or like to our data set that we have and as we can see up here we have my drive then we have cola cola notebooks cat stock reduced and then we have the pet images and then we have two the two folders here uh with our images so now we just go down here and use the actual like image data generator so we just specify some parameters with the image size uh, and also the batch size so how many images do we want in each of the batches we have this image data, data generator. We can start rescaling them if we want to like normalize all our pixel values in our images. And then we can also specify this uh, validation split parameter, which we specify to 0.2. So this means that we will take 20% of all the data in both the cats and dog folders, and we'll use those 20% to, um, to our validation uh, data set so we can validate our model. So when we're actually training on a neural network, it will not train. Um, it will not train on those twenty percent of, of the images. It will only validate uh, on that portion, so we can actually like, see how general and how good is our model. Is it underfitting or is it overfitting? So now we set up this uh, image data generator. We set it equal to this variable train data gen. Then we can actually like, just use from train data gen dot flow from directory. So we're just flowing in all the images from our directory uh, that we specify here. So this will be the data set path, which is just a path to the whole data set that we have up here. And then it will divide it into all the classes that we have in that folder. So in this example, we have two classes, cats and dogs. If you had like 10 classes, 100 classes, 1000 classes, it will do that automatically um, as well. So we set the target size here equal to the image size and we also set the batch size equal to the batch size. 
We also need to set up the class mode here. So in this example, we're just using a binary class. If you have multiple classes, you will need to specify a categorical here, and then it will just like read in as I just said, um, all the different kind of classes you have or like folders for each of the individual classes. So let's say you're in, you're in your data set, you have 10 classes, you will have 10 folders with all your data and you just need to specify categorical here as we're going to see in, in upcoming videos. We, all, we can also create subsets here. So this is really important when we just have one directory or like one folder with, with all our images and we want to split it into our validation set and our training set, then we need to create these subsets. So our train badges here will be our training data. So we need to set our subset equal to training. And we're just going to do this exact same thing for our validation badges and also the test badges. The only difference is that our subset will now be our validation set. And for test badges, we're not going to shuffle the data. So for our training, uh, training data here, it, it, ha it is default that we're shuffling the data. So every time we're actually like having our badges or like we run through our badges, it will shuffle the data. So it's not the same uh, that it sees at the same time in our actual like training process. So here we're just dividing our data into subsets of training and validation, where we use 80% for training and 20% for, uh, for validation. So this is everything you have to do. And this was the exact same thing. Uh, doesn't matter what data set you have. This is how we do it uh, in Keras and TensorFlow, where we're just using this image data generator. So when I hit run the, uh, this block of code, it will now do all of it. It will run uh, these data set paths and it will then flow all the images from the directories that we have specified. It will create batches. It will actually like scale the images to the image size that you specified. And it will also create this class mode here where, it's, where it sets up the labels automatically for you. So right now we're using a uh, one hot encoding. So we'll just have like one or zero for the class or like if we're using a cat, it could be like a zero. And if it's a dog, it's, it's, it's a one. But if you have multiple classes, you'll just have multiple labels and stuff like that. Keras here and TensorFlow will take care of that when you specify a categorical here in class mode. So now we can see we found almost like um, 3,900 images here belonging to two classes. So here you can exactly see if you found all the images in the directories and also how many classes did it actually like find from the data set that you specified. You also found around 1,000 images belonging to two classes here. And this is our training set. This is our validation set and this is our test set. So we're just using the exact same uh, data set for our validation um, and, and test set as well. And this will be 20% of a whole data set and this is 80% of our whole data set. So now when we have actually like loaded in our data set, we probably wanted to do some pre-processing on our images uh, as well. We're going to cover that in, a, in, a, in another video where we're going to have a custom data set, use transfer learning. But when we're using transfer learning, we actually like need uh, to pre-process our images so that it fit to the model that we actually like want to use transfer learning on. But right now I'm just going to show you like how we can actually like plot the images in our data set. Just another step here that we can do to actually like validate that we have loaded in the images correctly and our labels is also corresponding to the images uh, that we loaded in. So here we're just going to have a function where we're just going to plot the images. We're just going to pass in the image arrays and then we just have like a, a subplot here where we're just going to plot five images from one batch that we specify. And we'll just do this in this like kind of grid here. So we're just going to run this function from matplotlib. And then down here, we're just going to take the first train batch that we have. So we take the zero element of our train batches and it has actually act like two elements. So we have both the images or like the image and also the labels. So we take the, the, the first train batch here, which will be 10 images with the corresponding 10 labels. It will be stored in these two variables here. And then we can actually like plot the images and the labels here as well. So in this example, we're just going to take five images, plot those with the corresponding uh, labels in the first batch of our tra training data set. So when we run it here, it will just run this function and it will actually like plot the images. So here we can see we have a cat, we have cat, cat image, dog and dog. And then we can see the corresponding label down here. So as I said, we, had, we just have this um, one or zero if it's a cat or dog. If you actually like have multiple classes, you could have maybe like a zero, zero, one for one of the classes and then a, a zero, one, zero for an, the other class. And then if you had a third class, it will be one, zero, zero. And it will, you can just scale that to like an arbitrary uh, number or like dimension. So here we can actually like see the first image is a zero. So this is a cat. The second, um, second image here is a cat as well. And the third one, a cat. And then we actually like have ones now. So it will be two dog images here 
to the left, uh, to the to the right, or like the right two rightmost images. We can just do this exact same thing for all of our batches if you want to do that. But this is just to validate that we have actually like loaded in our data set uh, correctly. Again, we can see that this is a dog, cat, cat, dog, and cat. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video here, guys. I just wanted to show you how we can actually like load in a custom data set and use it here in Google Colab together with Google Drive. Uh, because you can really use the images or data sets from our own local machine. We need to upload it to the cloud when we're actually like using uh, Google Colab, which is also uh, doing all the processing in the cloud. So if you're using like, for example, Jupyter Notebook, you'll need to have it on your local machine, but this is in Google Colab. So we need to do it in this way here with our Google Drive. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It really helps me and YouTube channel out in a massive way. If you want to know more details about like how neural networks work, how can we actually like create them from scratch, training on data sets, do fine tuning, transfer learning, and so on, actually like create some really nice and cool applications, solve some classifications problems, and so on. I'll link to the deep learning tutorial up here or else I'm just seeing you next week, guys. Bye for now.